my little ham shack. This is W1XWX. Whiskey 1 X ray. Whiskey X ray. Well, I got my technician's license uh, a couple of months ago. Studying for my general license right now. Should be taking the test in the next couple of weeks, probably. I'm now passing uh, the practice exams pretty regularly, so kind of feel kind of confident. What I wanted you to learn about today is how to set up a ham shack. So we're going to do this video style, and what we're going to do is kind of show you some pieces of equipment that uh, you may or may not need in your ham shack. Anyway, this happens to be mine. So let's just go through the pieces of equipment one at a time and I'll kind of describe what they are and what they do. And then I'm going to show you how some of them actually function. So starting over here on the right is my radio. And being a poor ham radio operator, I only have two radios. I have this portable unit that I'm actually using as a base station. It's an ICOM, I-C-O-M is how you spell that, ICOM 7000. And it's a pretty good portable radio and to run it as a base station you've got to have a 12 volt power supply for it. It doesn't have its own power supply. So this big box over here is a pyramid 12 volt power supply and it puts out 13.8 volts which is the same voltage that you'd get off of a car battery uh, if it was mounted in a car so that's this big box here is nothing more than a power supply so to put it in the telescope uh, range you know you'd either have some batteries in the mount that you put in there to make the telescope mount work or you might have a separate power pack that you use to power your telescope mount. Well in the same fashion I'm using this power pack to power this radio. Alright. In the background you can kind of see the little uh, Woo Som uh, handy talkie radio that I've got sitting back here and it's got its own little recharger base that you know you can buy along with the radio and then you can recharge the battery that's in here there's other accessories you can buy for it like a little bit better antenna a separate microphone speaker that clips on you know, it's got a belt clip on the back, <clears throat> so you can wear it on your belt. I keep that in its charger right behind, right behind my main radio, right here. Now this happens to be an, an all-band radio. Uh, in other words, uh, <clears throat> It'll run from 180 meters all the way down to uh, 70 centimeters. Now, I know that doesn't mean a lot to most of the folks looking at the video, but just uh, understand that it can basically see a lot more frequencies than, uh, and receive a lot more frequencies than, you know, you'll probably ever want to use. <laughs> and actually work with. It also has several different digital modes built in like radio teletype, RTTY, it's got that built in, it's got AM built in, it's got uh, upper sideband, lower sideband modes that you can use. So it's basically a general purpose uh, all band ham radio, ICOM 7000. You can just look that up and find out a lot more about it. Uh, it does have an internal speaker, you know, but usually if you mount it in a car or in a truck or something, you're going to have some kind of 
uh, separate speaker just so you can hear better in the car. Well, in a similar fashion, I've got a separate uh, automotive style speaker, a little bit better speaker than what's built into this radio. And I've got it right here, and it's plugged in to the back of the radio as a external speaker. So I just went out and got an external speaker for it. A lot of gauges on here, you know, that might kind of confuse you a little bit, but uh, really they they all have a, a specific purpose. For instance, this little meter is connected to the radio and to one of the antenna wires coming in, uh, which goes to my 2 meter and 70 centimeter antenna which is mounted outside on top of my uh, little workshop and it measures the uh, forward uh, power of that antenna and the reflected power you don't want any reflected power because uh, it's basically going to come down the line and come into your radio and burn out possibly burn out some of the transistors in it so when you hear hams talking about they want a low standing wave ratio SWR they're just simply saying they want all the power going out and they don't want any of it coming back down the coax back into the radio so this little meter kind of tells me if the power is actually going out to the antenna or if this needle comes up it's actually being reflected back down the cable back into the radio which is no good so that's what this little meter does the power unit also has a couple of meters one shows amps and the other one shows the voltage that it's putting out okay so I can kind of watch those and make sure that the voltage is proper for the radio which uh, it's going to use 13.8 uh, volts and I want to make sure that's what it's getting most of these radios uh, if the voltage drops the uh, watts that they're putting out also drop and in the case of the ICOM 7000 you can have a you know a one voltage drop like from 13.8 to let's say 13 you might lose 20 percent of your power uh, I saw a chart somewhere on the internet that showed the power output of the radio versus the uh, voltage that it's getting and, and they really don't put out the full wattage that they're supposed to. This is a hundred watt uh, unless they're getting the full 13.8 volts. So um, that's kind of an important thing to make sure that you have a power pack that can maintain that voltage at 13.8 and also give it all the amps that it may need when it's transmitting at full power. So this is a 35 amp uh, rated power pack and it can put out 30 amps continuous, 35 uh, amp peak. So as you're speaking, when you modulate the microphone, key the microphone and talk, you can see those amps, how many amps you're actually putting out uh, while you're modulating the signal and speaking. The louder you speak, the higher this amp goes up. So uh, make sure you have a power pack that can support the radio and the specs are usually given and the documentation for whatever radio you're buying, what they recommend uh, for a power pack, how many amps it might need, and most all of the portable units uh, are going to be looking for 13.8 amps. I'm sorry, 13.8 volts. This other box down there is kind of a neat thing. It's a manual antenna tuner. It's an older model that I bought used. Uh, from QTH from a ham off of QTH and to put that in the uh, astronomy perspective it's like going to Astro Mart and buying a telescope 
off of Astro Mart. Well, there are sites like that for ham radio. One of them is uh, QTH. And if you just Google to QTH, you're going to see uh, that website. You're going to see the classified section. So just go to the classified section and you can uh, look around at some of the used equipment for sale. You don't have to be a member of QTH to actually buy stuff as you do on Astromart. Uh, but everyone has a call sign and that's selling there and I would never buy from someone who didn't have a call sign. And you can always look them up on the FCC database or the QRZ database and find out if they're actually who they say they are. So a uh, little uh, protection there when you're buying off of uh, QTH. Anyway, this is an antenna tuner, and it's actually used for to match the impedance of the antenna to what this radio wants to see. And most all radios want to see 50 ohms, 50 ohms at the back of that radio. So if you give it something other than 50 ohms, again, you run the risk of burning out your radio. So this antenna tuner, uh, the antenna line comes in through the window and it plugs into here first for the long wire antenna that I have outside. I'll show you that in a little while. And uh, then you can, by manipulating these dials, you can change the impedance that's uh, that wire from that antenna is bringing in to the building you can change that to 50 ohms uh, for what the radio wants to see or else you're going to have a reflected power you can have a high swr and all the power will be coming back into the uh, radio instead of going out through the wire it'll also be heating up the wire uh, probably won't happen at 100 watts, but if you were running a linear amplifier of, a, say, 600 watts or 1,000 watts, you basically uh, start heating up the coax with the reflected power. So, uh, again, it's got a meter on it, lights up, as you can see, and it, one side shows how much of the power is going forward, the other side shows if any is being reflected back. I'm going to do a little close-up and I'm going to tune up 10 meters and I'm going to show you and discuss how that meter reacts as I adjust the uh, impedance of that coax coming into the, uh, into the building from that antenna. I'll show you how you adjust it so you get an SWR rating of as close to one to one as possible. One to one would mean that needle right here is laying right there and it doesn't move. If that needle pops up, you know, you could have five to one, six to one, seven to one, ten to one, which would be very bad for the radio. In fact, most of the new radios, the newer, the older tube ones, really didn't have a whole lot of trouble with that because they had tubes, but the new transistor radios actually have circuits built in and if the SWR gets much over 2 to 1 to 3 to 1 it starts cutting back the power because it doesn't want to burn itself out. So it actually the new radios will not allow you to transmit uh, if you have a high SWR uh, because standing wave ratio is what that stands for but really all it means is uh, the ratio between the power going out and the power coming back and you want that to be one to one and you don't want to have uh, you know uh, 20 watts going out and 80 watts coming back in uh, definitely would be a bad situation it'd be four to one all right all right so with that i'm gonna kind of break the video and we're gonna get a close-up of this antenna tuner and I'm going to do tune up on 10 meters so
part of 10 minutes. Okay, so I've got you kind of zoomed in on this uh, antenna tuner right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to a 10 meter band. And I'm going to check the antenna to see if it's resonant. Okay, so I'm sitting here at 28.394 is my frequency right now, 28.394. And the first thing you want to do is you turn down the power on your radio. So I've got it down about 17% of full power right now just around 20% or less and then you play safe in case you have a real bad mismatch uh, you won't do any harm uh, so you turn down the radio so what what I would have done is I would have dialed around the, cha the channels and I might have heard someone calling for CQ any station CQ 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 this is W1 XWX calling CQ or something like that and I would have stopped turned the power down and I would have switched the radio to RTTY uh, radio teletype it's got a little button all you have to do is push the button and now I'm going to test the antenna to see if it's resonant so I'm going to key the antenna and you can see I've got uh, about <clears throat> about 17 watts going forward and I'm looking at like I'm about uh, one to one or one a little bit worse than one to one this needle moved I like to get it so it doesn't move at all so what I'm gonna do first I'm gonna the compact the knob called capacitance I'm going to turn, I'm going to key it up and turn it until it either goes up or down as far as it'll go. Right there. So that's as low as I can get it. Then I will tune the inductance knob to get it even lower. And there you go. I'm basically at one to one right now. Okay, but remember I'm only at about 17% power, so I'm going to turn it up to 100% because now there's enough power going through there that uh, it'll make the gauges uh, be a little more decisive when they move around. In other words, there's not a lot of power going through there so that the needles won't really move a lot they, uh, uh, until you actually apply some power to them. So I'm going to do that right now. And boy, it's just staying right there. You can see I'm, I'm over 100 watts power a little bit according to the meter. And every time I kid. And I'm really getting a teeny tiny, I don't think you might be not be able to see it on the video, a little tiny movement of the reflected power. It's not enough to worry about. So that's close enough. So. I would dial back now to the upper side band and if they were still talking of course this would only take me a few seconds to do this if I wasn't trying to explain it um, and if they were still talking I would do something like this I would wait for a break in the conversation and sometimes if during contesting, uh, which you'll hear about in a moment, uh, you know, there's not much of a break. So you got to step in there a little bit. So I might step in there and go, once I knew the person's call sign, let's just say his call sign was uh, uh, W3JAA. That's his call sign. I would have written it down on a piece of paper. And I would have jumped in there and gone, W3JAA, this is W1XWX. And I would have waited for him to answer me. Now sometimes they'll answer someone else and they might even say, uh, the other uh, operator, please stand by. So I, 
maybe he's talking to me I don't know yet but at some point he'll call for W1 XWX so let's suppose he just called W1 XWX then I would go W3 JAA this is W1 XWX down in Texas so I might say W3 JAA this is W1 XWX located at, at grid location EM12 XV in Texas EM12 XV in Texas your signal is 59 I repeat 59 over then I would wait for him to answer me back and we would exchange uh, uh, some information and if I was really into the hobby I might send him a QSL card a postcard indicating that we had made contact on this date so now that you know what each one of these pieces of equipment are radio speaker SWR meter specifically for two meters and 70 centimeters power pack antenna tuner for the rest of the band uh, I'm going to take you outside in a minute and kind of show you how this all connects together and I'm also going to take you a, a look behind here look behind my desk just to see uh, what's going on back there so hang tight here comes the next okay act. so now we're kind of looking behind my desk and as you can see I've got what's called a window pass through a window pass through there and that just means it's a little board with connections that run through the board and that way I don't have to drill any holes uh, through my walls I can just put this bo a board that has weather sealing around it in the window and then lock down the window with another board and that way I don't have to drill holes in the building and uh, this particular pasture is made by MFJ company and but what I wanted to show you was that every single piece of equipment you can see the wire right here every single piece of equipment is grounded into a ground bar so each piece of equipment has a ground wire running into this bar right here and then there's a ground wire that goes uh, into the pass-through and out the window and I'm going to show you the outside of that in just one second but it's very important that you ground all your equipment into one common ground using some kind of ground bar I bought this at an electrical supply house and then send one good wire out and ground that ground everything to the same uh, ground post okay so and you can see that that wire goes right down into let's make sure you can see that right there it goes right down there and that bolt actually goes right through the uh, pass through out to the other side so we're going to go outside now and look at the outside connections okay now antennas. we're uh, standing outside you can see the outside of the panel see how close i can get in here for you there's the ground wire and you can see that wire goes into uh, a ground rod eight foot ground rod that's down in the ground pretty good ways and it's grounded into that copper ground uh, rod all right so all the equipment has a common ground point right there and that ground is fairly short it only runs from there to there it's a short ground path fairly straight actually it's real straight now what you see attached to it is a what's called a lightning arrester and I've got that actually attached to my scanner that was in there that we never even discussed. But I've got a little what's called a lightning arrester that you can buy attached to the scanner antenna, which is the highest one. It's located on top of the main house, uh, basically above the chimney. So I wanted that one to have some 
uh, lightning ground protection and that lightning protector uh, is also grounded to that rod okay for antennas I've actually got uh, you're looking at three antennas there the little white one on the side is a 2 meter 70 centimeter uh, what's called a J pole that I bought off of eBay for about $39 it's not even connected I consider that my backup antenna uh, my Elmer which is a person that old timer that helps a beginner my Elmer uh, John uh, from my radio club uh, sold me this Cushcraft uh, 270 70, uh, 70 centimeter 2 meter uh, vertical which is what I'm using now it's uh, a little bit better antenna than that $39 J pole I bought and so I've got uh, uh, my re that's a repeater antenna and you've already heard about repeaters so I can pick up uh, frequencies like 146 point something or uh, 440 point something and those are the repeater frequencies in the Dallas area so I can pick those up and transmit uh, to them from that antenna you can see that it's mounted on a gable mount and the entire thing is grounded uh, the mount and the antennas are grounded with a big old ground wire that goes right down there into another ground rod uh, that's uh, you know about six feet in the ground a couple of feet sticking up and uh, so basically the mast and the antenna itself are grounded into that ground rod now that box that you see right there let me kind of scoot up on it right there uh, that's part of what's called a QSO King let me say that one again a QSO King and you get this uh, ballum is what it's called you get this uh, ballum along with wire this one happens to be 88 feet and we're going to try to show it to you but I don't know if we're going to be able to get it that wire 88 feet long runs over this tree okay it runs over the top of this tree and let's see can you see that right there let's just see if we can show you that wire maybe you can see it yeah there it is right there there's the wire and then it runs over way over there to the fence where I've got a piece of PVC stuck there with the wire uh, you know coming into that PVC pipe that's up about oh I don't know 15 feet over the ground or something like that maybe 20 feet over the ground and so it makes an inverted V shape comes from that ballum over there where the antennas are over the tree and then down to this um, piece of PVC so that's my long wire uh, antenna that I'm using for basically all the frequencies from 80 meters down to 10 meters I'm using that wire for receiving and transmitting so with that said I wish you 73 to you and it's a neat hobby it's a kind of a extension of your astronomy hobby as you probably found out today that you can do a lot of things that you can do a lot of things that are similar to the astronomy hobby uh, using ham radio equipment it's kind of complementary there are two hobbies that are complementary so I'd encourage you to go out there and take the technicians test and uh, then move on and get your general license and I'd say that's uh, you need to do that because you get a whole lot more frequencies that you can transmit on when you're a general rather than a technician. 
but uh, the technician license will allow you to transmit on the all the repeaters that are in Dallas so uh, you do have a, a lot of places where you can talk on your ham radio uh, whenever you want to even with a technician's license and you do have a little bitty part of 10 meters uh, from 28300 to 28500 that you can talk long distance on. The problem is uh, there's got to be, uh, the band has to be open which requires at 10 meters that there be a lot of sunspots and a lot of uh, activity in the ionosphere in order for 10 meters to uh, be able to talk the long, long distance. So uh, it's really most active during the maximum solar season which we're entering right now and uh, during solar minimum 10 meters is probably not going to be a very good band to talk on so uh, get that general license and then you don't have to worry about uh, you know how many sunspots there might be you can move on up to 20 meters or 40 meters or uh, if you like the rag chew and you can ask me what rag chewing is and you can move up to 80 meters or one of those where uh, folks just sit around for half the day and talk on the radio about nothing. So have a good day, clear skies and 73 to you. And if you're interested in this, contact one of the folks that uh, did this presentation and what we want to maybe do this next year is uh, have some ham sig meetings where some of the hams in the club in the astronomy club can get together and talk about ham radio see you guys later be good